world coin is it a buy is it a sell we're going to talk about that uh, we're going to talk about the black rock etf decision uh, and the biggest news that has failed to be reported has to do with the banks um, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and post a comment if you have a question below but first question and we're also going to take a look at uh, bitcoin price action and uh, kind of Take a look at the history, uh, you know, how, how do we get to where we're at today and the sideways snail paper range or are we going to get an explosion here over the FM, the FOMC meeting, which uh, we should get a rate hike decision tomorrow and bring, bringing that up 98.9% .9 chance that uh, we are going to get a rate hike of a quarter percent tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that and go over some of the underlying market dynamics so make sure if you do like the content you subscribe and um, post a comment below if you have a question all right i'm going to jump right into it starting out with um, actually some of the macro time frames on bitcoin or actually no let me read the world coin news so world coin launches launch raises eyebrows as wild price notches a double digit gain and what are they talking about here they're talking about the uh circulating supply which is only one percent so apparently there's a lot more wld again that is the symbol of the token for world coin where they're going to scan your eyeball and i'll tell you this much would I buy Bitcoin or would I buy WorldCoin? I think you know the answer. I'll choose Bitcoin all day long. And um, that is my uh, position there. Then you had uh, the FDIC, which has accused some banks of misrepresenting deposit data following the bank crisis in March. According to the S&P, 55 banks restated their Q4 numbers up 3x from a year earlier. You see many banks underreported to reduce their liability for the special assessment proposed by the FDIC in May. Now the regulators have called the banks to correct those figures. So they didn't want to pay more insurance for their deposits. Um, how do they even get to do that? And then uh, what else was it going to comment on? Um, gas price just hit $80 a barrel again and uh, gas price is up to $4. And that's after Biden announced uh, that he would refill the strategic petroleum reserves when oil prices fell to 67, 72 bucks. Um, and what else? There we go. X for everything. And uh, we got Max Kaiser out there in El Salvador enjoying life. Um, so back onto my little uh, description here. And I just watched a funny video about the BlackRock CEO. They asked him over and over, are you doing anything with blockchain? Um, and you know, on national TV he says no, and then turn, you know, and so I guess sometimes you gotta, you know, eat your words and come back to reality and, you know, go where the money's going. But, um, the BlackRock ETF decision comes August 12th. They can approve, deny or delay. Um, so that whole narrative will be following that up to August 12th. Yeah. And then you got the Hong Kong narrative nobody's really talking about, um, and then the um, banking crisis. But uh, are more banks going to fail? So I think it's an important time to you know take a look at Nasdaq, Dixie, Gold. We'll check in on Bitcoin, and I'll try and wrap this up here relatively quick, quickly. Uh, but we hit the measure move target off of this falling wedge, and the day it happened, right? The day that you know we hit the measure move, I said, hey, let's look for the six one eight, right? Let's look for the 618. And I've been saying, hey, that, you know, I would expect where the higher low to come in at some point. So you have to play, you know, boring sideways market and prepare for both sides. If we're going to break the, you know, if we're going to break the consolidation to the upside or the downside on the daily time frame, we have broken it. Um, the momentum is still to the downside and volatility is expanding above 25%. That's exactly what you want to see. So could this just be a little stutter step and then uh, continuation? We'll have to see what happens tomorrow. And that's what we're going to talk about. The expectation versus the reality, the expectation, we're going to get a quarter percent. So if he does more or less, that's where you could get a wild market reaction. In general, um, I think uh, I think that um, I'm going to bring up that chart in a second here. In general, I think he's been pretty in line with doing what is expected so how does that play out on dollar terms 
So we're, yeah, you know, we had a, a measure move break off of this descending triangle and said, hey, look, you know, we can gather liquidity up here. Um, we just don't want to see it close back above this horizontal. Otherwise, the idea of the downside move is, is pretty much out. So be interesting to follow the dollar. Uh, bonds are, you know, two year yield hit up 4.8% this morning. Um, so in general, you know, the th thesis on the dollar has not been playing out so well for Bitcoin um, over the past few weeks. So I think a better one to keep an eye on is going to be the NASDAQ. And uh, we did talk about uh, hitting the 786 FIB. We, I think we've taken it out now. So we have this here, you know, NASDAQ is just a higher beta. I'm sorry, Bitcoin is just a higher beta tech stock. And um, typically when, you know, NASDAQ is parting to the upside, well, Bitcoin's doing the same thing. So if this one does start to pe peel back and we have, you know, I'm willing to bet some bearish divergence there coming back from on the daily time frame. So one drive that typically gives you the shot to the nine exponential or the 21. Uh, could you call it three? Let's see. Not really, unless we take a look back from right here. Nope. It'd have to be all the way back from the highs over here. Then you're gonna have multiple drives. So interesting to play uh, to see what happens with NASDAQ or where the next narrative comes. Is it gonna be AI hype mania? Is it gonna continue on? Uh, we're gonna follow every step of the way as this market unfolds. And I just like to keep my eye on uh, Bitcoin at times like this. Uh, why is that? There's a couple of higher term time frame. Um, things I want to mention on some of our other charts, our secondary indicators. And this is the um, the weekly time frame, and you have what's called a capitulation signal on the hash ribbons indicator. And um, this is kind of a signal indicating that uh, miners have capitulated. So it just tells me one thing, we're that much closer to getting the next blue buy signal, which has been phenomenal at you know, catching some historic runs to the upside. And um, you can go back, test them for yourself, but you know, blue buy signal has been very, very good to us. And so, you know, does give me a little bit more of a bearish uh, tick saying, hey, you know, we could cool off here. And where do those cool off targets typically happen? Well, at that 618 FIB. However, if we smash through it, like NASDAQ just did, uh, it's not gonna look, you know, it's not gonna look good on a bearish retracement for Bitcoin. Um, what else do I want to bring up here on that weekly chart? We also have positive momentum on the slope of the accumulation distribution indicator, another point for the bulls there. And so that's just, you know, something I wanted to bring up as well. And uh, additionally, this is a big one here. The MACD on the monthly time frame did cross up last month for the first time. Uh, well, since since December 21, and this has led to some major melt up moves. I'll just, you know, go over maybe one of the last ones which occurred right here. Uh, you know, Bitcoin runs from as soon as it turned green, it ran from, you know, eight thousand dollars or sorry, nine thousand up to sixty thousand uh, dollars. The green flipped right here again, and it's all in line with the having cycle here. Um, but we flipped, we flipped blue, where was I? There's one, there's one there. I mean, I, I don't have time to go back test them all. The main one I wanted to bring up here though, is the MACD crossing to the upside. That was what I was looking at from a low level. In fact, it's never crossed up from this low of a level in history. And the lower you go, I mean, this was the last time it was this low where we had a MACD cross to the upside. And that's when Bitcoin ran from, what was it? Uh, like a 40,000% gainer. So that being said, I think it's duly noted. The histogram has turned green. We are crossed up looking for positive momentum. So where do we judge the next call from? Um, 
volatility expansion on the daily and the two day it does look like it has the opportunity and again this is a bearish retracement from the high to the low and just to give an idea how we use this on the last trade the fibonacci numbers do like to play with themselves pretty nicely but um we had a uh, i think we had it yeah draw it out like this and that's how we were looking for the move down to uh, 25,000 and we, you know, it took some patience to get there. Um, same thing. Patience is the name of the game right now. And, uh, just being aware of, Hey, we're in a weekly uptrend, right? We're making those higher highs and higher lows. And as long as that, you know, remains in place, we are in a good position. Um, let's see. So, yep. Just warning signs. Again, if we start to see NASDAQ, uh, close below the gap fill here. Um, that would be a, a pretty good warning sign. Um, but other than that, you know, higher lows and higher highs. This thing is the market that never goes down. And uh, Bitcoin dominance, also keeping an eye on that. You know, it's generally sideways and up. Um, we also have open interest coming at 9.6 billion. So ticking down slightly. The fear and greed index, we're right at a neutral right now. And I think that is it for me today. Um, I, I feel like I'm forgetting something that I wanted to bring up on Bitcoin as we are, you know, pretty much what I would like to see is a bounce up to this green 55, a retest, and then, you know, a continuation drive. If we are going to see some of the lower, you know, targets we're talking about. I don't really start to see any warning signs until Bitcoin starts to close below that pivot at 27.5 on a daily. And again, we talked about invalidation on this move. Any kind of a daily closure back above 30,500 says uh, crisis is averted and bear trap. And, you know, back above the critical level of 30,500, um, we can, you know, start to go over some upside targets. But first warning and then, you know, confirmation is a close back above the range high at 31. 31, uh, call it, yeah, I, I, 31,100, good enough for me uh, to call it. But um, yeah, what we don't want to see is something like this, a double top formation, you know, here, here, and Bitcoin comes down to the low of 25,000 and breaks it. That'd be a major break of structure and not, not what I would call bullish. Um, other than that, guys, I'm going to let you have a blessed and highly favored day. I will be back tomorrow and we'll talk about the rate hike and what happened. Take care.